it's very, very political in the sense that you look at, let's say I was to say something to you, I wanted to say something to you. I look at my size, I look at your size, I look at uh, in what ways can I overcome you? In what ways can I not overcome you? Do I want to fight with you physically? Do I want to fight with you intellectually? And I realize physically I can't compete with you. But intellectually, maybe I can beat you up. But I have to make sure that I don't cross certain lines because there comes a point that if I begin to intellectually harass you and you find yourself embarrassed in front of all these people, you may actually stand up, come to me, and now things get physical. And now my intellectual paralysis will do nothing for me. So everything we do in life is mostly, you know, political. Now, <clears throat> there is this other part to us. It's called the ego. So here you sit. You are in the cradle of something very primal. as well as something that forces you and tells you, grow up, mature, think, reflect. Don't just act out like an infant. You have zero power. You will either listen to this part of you that seeks pleasure or seeks this that is governed by this, that gives you pleasure, but in a very painful way. Carry your cross. You're here not only to understand why your father is the way he is, but also to carry the emotions as they are related to your father. You can carry both. The unrefined says, my father is a jerk, and that's the end of the story. Once you take the anger to the therapist's office, your therapist will say, do you know your father well? You say, well, no. Well, I have his file here with me. Did you know that his father belted him on a daily basis for 25 years? All of a sudden, you begin to connect the dots and you say, oh my God, my father was never with me, around me physically. He never hit me. He never belted me. He was just never there. His own father always there belted him. There is a reason my father was never there. As a kid, I frustrated him every single day. He had a couple of options. He could either stay and slap me or just leave and be out of my life. And now you say, oh, my father was such a saint for not being in my life because he couldn't control himself. Okay? Now, some of, there is, of course, this other part of us, the unconscious. You know, there were, um, there are three figures in human history that made our lives a complete mess. The first is Galileo. Galileo believed, and rightly so, that when you read Genesis, you know, God creates human beings and then the earth because of us. Why? Because inside us lives God's image. Our life is valuable. Our life is meaningful. God loves us. He's up there somewhere, always looking down, protecting us. Galileo comes about and says, no, it's not the sun that revolves around the earth. It's actually the earth that revolves around the sun. We are really just a speck of dust in the middle of nowhere. And if God is not up there looking down and protecting us, what are we doing? Where are we going? What is the meaning for our life?
If you're familiar with this ancient epic, the epic of Gilgamesh, one of the awful things that Gilgamesh eventually asks is, when I die, I will be forgotten. Now, some of you young kids, <laughs> you have two young kids in this class who have difficulty perhaps grasping that, and rightly so, but 50, 50, 50, 50, we are close to our deaths. We will be forgotten. And once you are forgotten, you realize that your life really didn't mean as much. You're not going to be remembered like Malcolm X or Mahatma Gandhi or Spider-Man or Superman. We didn't do anything with our lives. Sure, you know, your kids, your wife, your husband, your parents maybe will be grieving your loss. They'll have your picture in a frame somewhere for a couple weeks or a couple years. After a while, they'll do some house cleaning and they realize, yeah, you know, can we just move that frame somewhere else? And eventually, even your picture is too much. You'll be completely forgotten. I don't know if there is a soul. Someone like Sigmund Freud really destroyed that for us. And consider again World War II, World War I and II. If all these people really have the kingdom of God within them, why are they willing to kill themselves and each other? <clears throat> then there is this guy named Charles Darwin. I was born in Iran, sometimes the temperature gets to be 150. My skin needs to be this color. It's not because of God. Geography, climate, they all come together and they create something like this. I can survive the climate. You'll find some bears in Alaska, they're quite fairy, heavy coat white, and then you'll find some bears in California. Take the bears in California, dump them in Alaska. Take the bears in Alaska, dump them in California. The bear with a thick jacket will not survive California. Is it because God made it that way? No. What Charles Darwin came to realize is that species, all life forms, have this wisdom or intelligence within them. They know exactly what to do how they should survive. It's not because of God. Your own organism knows what to do. Your hair grows long, not because God wills it, not because you will it. For those of you at the very beginning of this class mentioned that you repress or have forgotten certain experiences, your organism knows, it has the wisdom to know how to survive. You forget. It's the only way to survive. And then you have Sigmund Freud. Now for those of you in this class who take philosophy classes, you take spiritual classes, you go to workshops, you read books to figure out who you are, what you are, Freud comes forward and says, no, you may know some parts of yourself, but you can really, really never know yourself because we live whatever we are, This main part of us lives in darkness and no one has access to it. You will forever remain a stranger to yourself and other people. <clears throat> now, the aid. Why do we desire sex? You go to Zachary's and you have a slice of deep dish spinach mushroom and it's delicious. Your stomach tells you it's enough, don't give me any more. But you go for the second slice and then a third slice. Why do we do it? What is it about pleasure 
instant pleasure that has so much force over us. Why is it that we enjoy complacency? We enjoy being lazy because it removes responsibility. Why is it? <clears throat> there are some desires or some things that give us pleasure that are organic. And there isn't much you can do about that except to control them the best you can. But then there are certain things that are, are caused by the environment in which you live. So, uh, we are in this battle zone and we, are, we have a few forces that are against us. Number one, you have to figure out who you are, what you are, and what you want to do for the next 50, 60, 70 years. That's a huge responsibility. And you will never get it right. It's impossible. And you will have emotions or feelings about your mistakes that will eventually paralyze you. You live in the social world. Some of you don't want to be here. But you need to graduate. So what do you do? You come here. And other classes. And what happens when you come here in other classes? Well, your instructors harass you. What more? They give you busy work. What more? Well, once you do the work, they'll judge that work. And most often, you won't like the way they judge your essays, then you have to go to work. Do you enjoy your work? Probably not. You have to pay rent, it's too high. Do you enjoy giving your money away? Of course not. You walk around the lake, you don't need to know people. They look at you and you know they're mean and you're affected by their meanness. If you live in society and its rules, you're going to be pushed around. I used to have lots of athletes in my classes. I felt bad for them. I would pass them. <clears throat> now, the moment when I have an athlete, I just say, there's a good chance you're going to fail my class. I, do I know their history? Of course not. Maybe they're an A student. Do I care? No. I am governed by my past. 15 years of having athletes in my class and coming to realize how all of them plagiarize and cheat, never do their work. <coughs> I am governed by that experience. And that poor student sitting in the back has no choice but to be judged by me. Do I know them? No. Do I care? No. <coughs> you live in an environment where other people have power over you and you'll get demolished by their power biologically there comes a point in your life where you say I'm getting old I'm single I won't have a companion so what do you do you get into a relationship. And for those of, those of us in this class who have been in relationship, you're going to be in the presence of forces you won't understand. And those forces are going to push you around. And just in case you assume that your id is going to come out and say all these nasty things to your companion, think again. If you want the relationship to continue, you'll bow your head, you'll say, yes, honey, I'll take out the trash. And finally, <coughs> the four of us in this room who are close to 50, 60, and 70, you're in the cradle of old age. You're going to be harassed by your body. 
You're going to wake up on your shoulders, you're going to wake up on your back, you're going to wake up on this, you're going to wake up on that. It's difficult to move. How are we going to cope with all this stuff? We haven't even talked about traumatic events in our lives. We'll talk about that later. But the point I wanted to make with talking about Sigmund Freud is the following. If you are a human being, you are going to be pushed around by life. You will have negative emotions. And you will either express your negative emotions through id or through superego. The truth is, life is unjust. Life is unfair. But read the Bible. And you know what it says? All things happen because of God's will. Problem resolved. I am sick, I am old, and I'm dying. Why? The Quran, because when I die, I have a soul that will go back home. My life down here was so unfinished, so incomplete. And religion will tell you, you have a soul. That soul is perfect. There is nothing incomplete about you. What you feel to be incomplete is your greed. Once you die, everything will be fine. So how do we cope with life's miseries? And it is truly a miserable place to be. <laughs> I'm glad that the American culture is not a Buddhist culture. I'm glad that the Buddhist culture doesn't really understand the teachings of the Buddha well. All of life is suffering. And there is no escape from suffering. Except if you're able to practice detachment. It's a nice bumper sticker. Not applicable. For any of us, because as human beings, our organism gravitates towards attachment. We create history with people. History creates emotions. Emotions create narratives. We have no choice but to be related, connected emotionally with and to other people. And when they deceive us, when they lie to us, we are hurt. When they die, we are hurt. We grieve. Sometimes we find ourselves completely in paralysis. So the ideas of Buddha are good only for one person, the Buddha himself, not the rest of us. The ideas of Jesus, man does not live by bread alone, maybe for him, not for us. Now, How many of you smoke in this class? That's it too? How many of you smoke weed? Except two? Okay. <clears throat> How many of you do LSD? Mushrooms? Cocaine? Hash? All of you? It's what Freud calls sublimation. And it's not just drugs, it's, it's anything that will distract you. Life is difficult. And it's really difficult to wake up in the morning. Being aware of the difficulties ahead of you. Being aware of all the ways that you and I try to distract ourselves. It's really, really difficult. So what do we do with the fact that we have no idea where we're going, we have no idea what we're doing. And we have to answer to people we don't like. We have to do things we don't like. One of the things we do, we smoke. We drink. We watch movies. We 
It's what they call cultural sublimation. There's a good amount of anger inside Americans. So what do we do? We watch Rambo. We watch UFC. We watch MMA. Why? Because they release the tension that lives inside us. <clears throat> we want to be in relationships. But we can't. We've become far too asocial. We are not digestible for ourselves or for other people. But we are human beings who desire intimacy, who desire sex. So what happens? We create pornography. We are <clears throat> all losers. So what do we do? I support warriors. Why? Because they've won the World Cup for five straight years. When they win, I win. We live through other people. That's the way you forget the fact that we are in many ways incompetent. and Our life amounts to really nothing. We don't drink or we don't smoke or we don't just watch movies for no reason. We are political animals. Life is boring. Being bored is painful. Being bored means their life is meaningless. But when you smoke, you forget. <clears throat> For those of us who no longer drink and we want to have perhaps a bit more meaning to our life, we do something different. We have evolved a little, matured a little. We no longer drink or smoke or watch just raunchy movies. We paint, we go for hikes, we do music. We become artists. There is something inside us that wants to express and we don't want the expression to be through alcohol or drugs. We want them to be a bit more meaningful. That's the way we cope. My mom dies and I'll have her face tattooed on my arm. I won't think too much about grief. I won't think too much about mortality, about old age, about love, about the fact that human beings have a tendency of just forgetting period. So I become an artist. That's the way I cope with the loss of my mom. I can't bring her back. And after a while, it's just something on my arm. <clears throat> and should some of us find that drinking and smoking will no longer be satisfactory, it doesn't really answer the questions we have or the emotions we have on the inside, should some of us come to realize that painting or music or poetry no longer works for us, you go to Barnes and Nobles, you buy yourself a copy of the Bible or the Quran, or you get a book by, I don't know, Jordan Peterson, or you get a book by Eckhart Tolle, and they give you all these fantastic ideas about having a soul, about having power over anger, about having power over loss and grief, becoming more than what we really are, just human beings who are pushed around by life on a daily basis. And what religion will do for you is that you're pushed around because God wants you to be pushed around. Because in you being pushed around, there is a lesson to be learned. You know, it's uh, very difficult to be very honest 
and Sigmund Freud was profoundly honest. That's why his ideas are very grim and very bleak, because he was very honest. Now, <clears throat> so we are forced, pushed around by our own interiors that we don't have access to, mostly. We are forced around by life being in society, and we are pushed around by our bodies. And whenever you're pushed by anything, you will have feelings, you will have emotions, and you will have trauma. It's, it's just one thing before I forget. The only reason why for the past many weeks you have sat there very quietly and respectfully you're able to repress your emotions. Keep your tongue in your mouth, say nothing. But when you leave this classroom, you say that piece of shit, Amir Sabzavari, I don't like him one bit. When you live in society, you repress, you cease to express how you feel about things. You may not like your boss, but you will smile when you see him. Okay, And the point is this, the more emotions you have inside that you have repressed, the more weight you carry. That's how it is. All of us in this room are in a similar situation. If you are in society, you are in a relationship. Which means that you have no choice but to carry the burdens given to you by society. So the idea of forgive them, for, forgive them for they not know what they do, okay? There's a good reason for saying that. Don't judge. There's a reason for saying those things. That there is no one exempt from being messed up by life. No one. And you also understand that most people don't have the privilege to go here, read, Go to a therapist's office, listen, digest, go back into this world and understand it. The Buddha was a prince. Moses was a prince. Muhammad was rich. Confucius was rich. Lao Tzu was rich. Malcolm X was rich. Martin Luther King Jr. was rich. Mahatma Gandhi was rich. Thinking, reflecting is the place for privileged people, not those who are being pushed around by life on a daily basis. You don't have time to think. The only thing we are able to do is to react to all the forces of life. So remember philosophy, the art of thinking, is not for everyone. So next time you buy a ticket to go see someone like Jordan Peterson, someone like Eckhart Tolle, Sadhguru, you want to travel to India for two weeks on a spring break to run into this like great teacher, what you need to know is the following. Eckhart Tolle, Jordan Peterson lived their life on a stage. They eat, they sit, they listen, they think, and then they express themselves. You and I, we work 40 hours a week. We have a wife, we have a husband, we have kids, we are old, we are sick. Don't ever go there and have those people deceive you. These are two completely different worlds. And if you want to go, go only to be inspired. You're not going to be transformed. You don't go to a concert because you're the next Taylor Swift. You don't go to a concert because you assume you're going to be Miley Cyrus. It's just a concert. When you go to Jordan Peterson, it's just an intellectual concert. That's it. Now, oh, well, listen, are we done? Is it time? No. Well. Can you answer my question? I did? Yeah, about the, I'm sorry. About the weight of... Yeah. 
when we come back on Wednesday, we'll talk about, which I think is very important, moods, feelings, emotions, and how sometimes certain events cause trauma and how trauma unfolds in our life, the way we think and feel about things. And that leads us to fear, anxiety, loneliness, depression, and then our desire to find a way out, which is nearly impossible, but we'll talk about them nevertheless. Have a nice day.